What's up beauties? Lisa May here. Hope you all are having a fabulous, motivated, and maverick Monday. Today I am back with another video where I want to talk about, drum roll please, happiness. <laughs> 2018 I have really been focused on health and happiness and as such I wanted to pick back up with the book that I read, Happy Women Live Better by Valerie Burton where in addition to 13 triggers of happiness she also lays out 12 12 myths of happiness i wanted to share this just in case you were struggling with your happiness and just to see what you thought about it if these are things that you believed at one point in time or if these were things you always rejected um, as a myth or always knew were a myth because i know for myself some of them like even some of them now today i'm like mm, nope i think that's true <laughs> So without further ado, let's get right into Myth it. Myth number one is you'll know what makes you happy. She says that we are poor predictors of what makes us happy. We tend to think that a new relationship or a new job or a promotion or a new car will make us happy when in fact happiness is a state of mind. She says happiness is about your attitude toward life. So of course I understand what she's saying and I agree with what she's saying. However, I do think that I know what makes me happy. A really good book with a good cup of coffee makes me happy. Buying flowers at the farmer's market makes me happy and seeing them throughout my house. You know, painting my nails makes me happy and seeing them every day. But, you know, maybe like she's saying, maybe that's a poor uh, prediction or indicator of what's really making me happy. But that's the first myth, is that you'll know what makes you happy. So the second myth is that success produces happiness. Now I have to say, I used to believe this myth, um, but within the past three years, I've definitely started to see it as a myth. She says that everything that we pursue, we pursue because we think it'll make us happy. Whether it's your career, uh, money, losing weight, whatever. And she says success is no different. However, she says it's the other way around, that happiness actually produces success, that our attitudes, the positive emotion, and the optimism that accompanies our happiness is what produces the success. And like I said, I can definitely see this being true. I really started to see this within like the past three years, that happiness creates success. Because when you're happy, People want to be around you. People present opportunities to you. People invite you places. There's just a lot of opportunities that can come out of being happy. Myth number three is that happiness is about what happens. She says that circumstances account for only 10% of what makes you happy. Study after study show that after a difficult or tragic circumstance, people bounce back to levels of happiness close to where they were before the change in circumstance. If you were a pretty happy, optimistic person before, let's say you got in a car accident, you're going to return to being that happy, optimistic person. But if you were a person who was negative and complained about things, after your car accident, you're going to be negative and complain about things. Um, and I can just, I definitely think that that's true just from my own experience. I could definitely see... Um, I'm not sure whether I used to think this was a myth or not, but I mean, I can definitely see the reality in that because I do think that, you know, circumstances are temporary, but really like your attitude is ongoing, I guess. Myth number four is that focusing on happiness is selfish. Y'all, come on. I know y'all have believed that. Like, I think every woman has believed that at some point in their life until they discover the truth. But she says, and I love this because it's actually um, from scripture. If you remember, I told you that a lot of this book is based in scripture. Um, and that's one of the things that I loved about it. But she says that in scripture, Solomon in Ecclesiastes says that, and I quote, There is nothing better for man, I'm sorry, there is nothing better for people than to be happy and do good while they live. This is a gift from God. I love that. I absolutely love that. 
I think a lot of times we feel guilty about being happy or cultivating our happiness, um, particularly because we live in a world where misery is just all around us. There's a lot of people that are miserable in the world. There are a lot of things that occur in the world that can make you miserable or the purpose is to make you miserable and to, you know, draw you away from God if you want to, you know, get into the spiritual or religious side of it. But, um, you know, we tend to feel guilty about that. We, we think that it's selfish to focus on ourselves and being happy. We think that we need to focus on everyone else. We think that we need to tend to everyone else, not realizing that you really have to be operating from a place of fullness. You know, your cup has to be full and running over in order to spill into other people. And it's not selfish at all. You know, people will look at you like, you know, how dare you be happy? But that's just it. You have to dare to be happy. Happiness is also contagious. So it's actually not selfish at all. It's actually the, the most inspiring thing that you can do sometimes is just to be happy and to operate from your place of happiness. You know, to let your light shine and let other people see it because then they can get an idea that it's possible to be happy. You know, there's life on the other side of misery. There's life on the other side of circumstances, you know? So dare to be happy, be bold, be brave, be happy. <laughs> Myth number five, and I think this is so interesting, is that with so many opportunities and advances in the workplace and society, that women are actually happier but actually studies are showing that this is just isn't true you know we kind of talked about that a little in detail in the last video um happy women live better the research is actually showing that women are getting less and less happy what i think is so interesting about that is that you know it's really women that are out here fighting for these opportunities and these advances so the fact that they're fighting for something that they're reporting is not making them happy it's just kind of like a paradox to me um you know maybe it's because the women who are fighting maybe they're not the same women being polled i don't know but i just think that's very interesting that women fight so hard but yet the studies are showing that you know it's not really adding up that they're not happy it's almost as if their fighting is in vain but i think we can all attest to that not being true you know i don't think any woman's effort is in vain but um i mean that could probably almost be a video in itself and i would definitely like to hear what you all have to say about that like, please leave me some comments below and tell me what you think about that because again i mean i just think that's very interesting why do you think that is like i really have no idea and i want to know myth number six is women who work are happier and more fulfilled she says that women who stay at home report more happiness than women who go to work. For myself, I've been at both sides of it. And I have to say that while I love when, you know, I'm not working a nine to five job, I love the time that I have to really work on myself. Um, <clears throat> the time to read, research, work out, meditate. But I mean, after a while, that gets a little, little old and after a while it starts to be too much time and i just start to go all over the place so i really think for me personally i am a lot more happy when i am working one because i have income coming in um i have the money to support myself my bills are paid i know that my bills are going to be paid and i also have money to invest in myself and that's very important to me investing in myself myth number seven is that having children will make you happier she says that multiple studies over multiple decades show that married women with children are less happy than married women who do not have children Single moms report having higher stress levels and less happiness than single women without children. So um, I can definitely say that I see this being a myth. Um, I think for me personally though, it's it wouldn't be a myth for me because I am someone who wants to have children. But I do understand what she's saying. And I do think that that's interesting that um, married women with children report less happiness than married women without children i think that's very very interesting also um i don't know I, maybe if you're having children out of obligation if you don't really want children i don't know but you know what i mean if you're bold enough leave me a comment if you if you're someone who has children do you agree with this 
do you, do you do you agree with this? Do you find that like do you envy your um, either your married or your single girlfriends who don't have children? Do you feel like your children are a hindrance? Um, you know, if if you're bold enough to to comment to let that be known, please do. I would I would just love to hear you know your thoughts and your perspective on that. Myth number eight is if I could make more money, I'd be happier. This is one of those ones where I'm like, mm, I don't know. I think that might be true, <laughs> you know, just for me personally. He says that beyond a household income of $75,000, money won't make you happy. She says that if you live in poverty, you know, and you get a significant increase in your income, of course you're going to be happy because all of your needs are going to be met. And at that point, she says your happiness will skyrocket. Um, again, like I said previously just a moment ago you know I have um, since 2015 I have you know gone back and forth with being employed being unemployed um, therefore I do have a lot of needs that need to be met um, so I could definitely maybe that's why I definitely believe that because yeah you give me you give me a check for fifty thousand dollars right now I will be ecstatic <laughs> you know I'll pay off the things I need to pay off um, invest invest in myself invest in some other things um, so yeah, that would definitely um, give me an immediate boost in happiness. But I guess she's saying beyond that, you know, once your needs are met, that money won't make you happy. I get what she's saying, but that's going to be one of those things where I'm just going to have to see for myself. <laughs> Myth number nine is if I live in a nicer neighborhood, I'll be happier. She says that you'll be happier living in a neighborhood that's a little bit less than you can afford. She says that it, it turns out that we are happier when we're living in an environment where we are at least slight, where we are doing at least slightly better than the people around us. Um, and she says it decreases the pressure of keeping up with the Joneses. It makes it less likely for you to feel like you're missing out or that you're underachieving or that you're falling below and this will make you happy. I have to say that I, again, personally, I have to say that I disagree with this for myself because, you know, I have lived in relatively, for me, some of the best neighborhoods and I've also lived in the hood. And it didn't make me happy to live in the hood. You know, I've never really been someone to feel happy about the fact that I am perceived to be doing better than someone that you know that's never really made me happy and I'm also someone I'm like a very visual person I like to have things around me that inspire me I like to have something that I aspire to um, I don't really believe that I'm someone who tries to keep up with the Joneses because I think keeping up with the Joneses is more um, more like a competition that's more like a competitive drive and that's not what I'm talking about here for myself I'm really just talking about inspiration and aspiration so I want to see something that you know that motivates me that shows me this is what I want to get to I don't like to get too comfortable or complacent I always like to be in pursuit of something that drive makes me happy myth number 10 is that marriage makes women happier and men feel confined. I think this is so interesting um, because typically we think that women are just dying to get married and men are trying to avoid like the ball and chain. You know, that's what we, we see all the time. But she's saying that the research does not support that, that the research is saying, she says that study after study shows that men are actually happier in marriages than women. And when men divorce, they're actually more likely to get married, to remarry, and to stay remarried. I'm sorry, they're actually more likely to get remarried than women are, and they actually get married faster than women. So, I mean, I can definitely see, I mean, I would definitely believe this myth that women are happier in marriage and men are kind of like feeling confined and trapped. I definitely believe that, but I can definitely see um, the myth in that or the reality or yeah I could definitely see the myth in that because I think it's just maybe a testament to good women especially good black women you know they really hold down their family they hold down the home you know and they really provide on like that emotional and that nurturing level 
for their family and their home. So I can imagine that the man is feeling good, you know, like the home is looking good, his wife is looking good, the children are taken care of, you know, she laying it down on her, you know, like she's really, she's really taking care of that man and, and spoiling him and, and catering to him. So, you know, he's good, he's happy, but I can imagine that that can be stressful or exhausting for a wife after a while. So I could definitely see how um, how that would be true. And maybe that's why a lot of relationships now are starting to go the way of, I guess maybe like equality, like where, they're, where people are doing away with like the gender roles and things like that. Myth number 11 is that happiness is easy. She says that we are, we are constantly bombarded with messages that tell us we can't be happy until we get the job, we get the promotion, we get the car, we get the husband, we get the perfect body. And she says we have fewer support systems that make it possible to do that. So therefore, being happy is not as easy. Um, again, I, I can definitely see the myth in that. Um, I think personally, I think it's easy to be happy but I think it is an effort to stay happy to maintain happiness um, but I definitely see her point about the the support system and actually I think a lot of that a lot of a lot of the reason why we have it, it's just coming to me now but I think the reason why there are so many reports of less happiness and why it's so hard to be happy these days is because she's right that support system is missing i think we are starts we're starting to really move away from um, tribalism is more into individualism and that can be very lonely you know just feeling like that you have to do things all by yourself especially you have to do you have to do it in the pursuit of success you know I, again, I said this before, but we're so quick to be like, you got to cut this person off. You got to let go of this person to get where you're trying to go. And of course, you do. You do. You have to be careful of the company you keep and all that good stuff. And everybody can't go with you. But you don't go so far to the extreme where you cut everyone out of your life. You know, you have to have people in your life. You have to have family whether the family that you're born with or the family that you create for yourself but you do have to have that support system and when you have that support system i think that that exponentially increases your happiness i really do um so yeah going back to the point that the myth that happiness is easy i can definitely see the the myth in that and i can also see the reality like i said i think that happiness i think that being happy is easy but i think it is difficult to maintain your happiness just because you do have a lot of things coming at you that force you to do away or to let go of your happiness even for just a moment but um i think i was about to say something but i forgot what was i about to say um oh yeah you know i think that um happiness is just is the decision like she said you know happiness is a state of mind you just have to make the decision to be happy or to want to be happy and then you cultivate it and then that can be where the challenge comes in because of the things that we have all around us but yeah myth number 12 is having it all will make us happy how valerie burton describes having it all in this book is the husband the kids the stellar career the knockout body and happiness that's how she describes having it all personally i feel like you can have it all i know a lot of there's a lot of debate about whether you know women can have it all or not i do think that women can have it all you know i really maybe because i'm a christian and i believe that all things are possible through christ who strengthens me but i don't think that that's a lot to ask for like the what I could start to get a little like whoa girl how are you going to do that is if you know you're trying to build um a media empire you're trying to build a restaurant franchise you're trying to um publish 12 books you're trying to be a stay-at-home mom you're trying to be a painter you're trying to open an art gallery like to me that's when you're like 
okay and even then i think that it's possible to do all those things you just have to space it out and decide what you're going to do first you know i do think that all those things are possible but really just to have a husband to have children a good career a workout body and happiness the the fact the fact that that's up for debate about whether you can have that is kind of crazy to me i feel like that's the standard but maybe i'm illusioned you know that's what i'm saying y'all so leave me some comments let me know what you all think you know do you think yeah just what do you all think um but i do want to just say this one last thing about um having it all and like happiness i feel like the only time having it all according to my definition of how i described having it all i feel like the only time that will not make you happy or even according to her um her definition of it i feel like the only time having it all will not make you happy is if having it all is not what you envision for yourself if you didn't come up with the vision for yourself if the if the ideal was not birthed out of your own spirit it was not given to you from god it was not what you wanted but something that someone else gave you or made you feel like you should do that that's the only time that it's not going to make you happy but like i said leave me some comments let me know what you all think so those are the 12 myths of happiness um yeah let me know what you all what you all thought about it you know seriously and again check out the book if if you haven't already if you have been struggling with your happiness and feeling like you know, basically, if you've just been struggling with your happiness, I would definitely recommend this book because she does give you a lot of things to commit uh, to think about. In addition to giving you things to think about, she gives you things to do, things to implement, to try. And I mean, it definitely helped me let go a lot of my limits and beliefs, feeling like I needed to wait for things in order to do things. So um, I would definitely recommend the book. But yes, beauties, that is all for now um hope you all have enjoyed this conversation i always enjoy talking to you all sharing with you all and please y'all leave me some comments like don't just leave me out here by myself like talk to me i keep call i call you every day no i'm lying but i call you don't never answer the phone you'll never text back you'll never leave a comment <laughs> but no until next time lisa may here saying peace love and blessings